After completing his engineering and working for a couple of banks, Ramesh Sobti chanced upon a rather unusual opportunity. When I left Avin Amaro as the CEO, and this opportunity came, which is uh, to take over the helm of Indusind Bank, and uh, five of us together took that uh, jump. And uh, over the last four and a half or five years, I've been asked this question many, many times by investors and analysts and things like that on why you left. You were at the peak uh, in a multinational bank, fat bonuses, glamorous lifestyle and all the sort of jobs. And this was a relatively uh, impaired sort of bank. Uh, very few people really know about it, knew about it. So why did you take that job? And I think finally that's where the, the, the final instinct came. And it came at a very late stage of my life, you know. That's why I keep wondering, uh, how do 60-year-olds become entrepreneurs? When you talk entrepreneurs, you really think of youngsters, right? But I think at every stage of life, there is this opportunity. Uh, for me, this opportunity came when I was 58 years old, right? When I had the chance of, uh, of coming here. The whole thing was at that stage, how do we take this bank from being a, what people would call an outlier bank, to become one of their the most profitable banks uh, in the country. Still, Ramesh and his team were determined to prove that things could change. Turning point, uh, turning point maybe the Lehman crisis. You know, uh, we came in in February. We presented our business plan to the board in March, right? And uh, we started implementing in, in April. And in October, the world exploded. Uh, you know, the Lehman crisis, actually, um, while it created a slowdown and things like that in the economy, really gave us an impetus to do certain things and build um, certain features uh, in our the construct that would stay forever. Uh, what did Lehman do to banks in India? It caused a liquidity crisis, right? And that's when we imbibed that lesson and said, we will never allow this bank to get into a liquidity crisis, right? So you do certain things. Uh, what sort of liabilities do you raise? What sort of assets do you create? And you know, the business model really started moderating or modifying a little bit. So we said, we don't have money to do long-term lending. We don't have infrastructure, therefore. We'll become a working capital bank, right? So how that filtered? That you have to work on the liability side of the balance sheet that you want current exchange bank accounts, right? So build your products around that sort of thing, you know? So I would say that was one turning point. And uh, I think one large turning point also happened around that time, uh, around October, December of 2008, when we resolved uh, through persuasive action, one of our largest bad debts. Uh, that bad debt accounted for one third of our book. And suddenly, from, you know, having bad debts at 3% of our portfolio, we became 1.3% of the portfolio. And I think that changed the attitude of many players with whom we have to deal with to do banking. Today, Indus In Bank has a pan-India presence with more than 900 branches and 1,600 ATMs and has a CAGR of 27% in loans, 32% in revenue and 39% in profit after tax over the last five years. The bank has launched a variety of consumer-friendly services including the video branch and digital initiatives like On The Go, Quick Pay and Swift Pay. Well, in brief, we think the future is brighter than the past. Uh, that belief comes from the fact that one, uh, we have very strong belief in the market. It's a growing market, you know. It's not a stagnating market. India is uh, uh, perhaps one of the finest banking markets in the world. Uh, we are well placed to uh, ride uh, that banking wave uh, um, that's going to come. So that's the firm belief that uh, this thing. The question is, uh, how will you position yourselves to uh, maximize uh, the benefits of that wave? And that's why we are building. Uh, so our proposition going forward is really that we bring scale into our businesses and retain our profitability. So we have a mantra of scale with profitability. Scale in the branch network, scale in your, of course, the workforce, scale in your products and services, scale in your fees 
and scale in your profit, you know, scale in your customer base, most importantly. So, scale with profitability is really going to play, okay. There are a few new developments uh, that, that, that are happening, which today seem insignificant in terms of the, the revenue pool that lies uh, in those areas. Uh, that's the area of financial inclusion, where a lot of debate and discussion has already, already happened. Uh, but I think uh, models are evolving uh, to really work into that space uh, on a viable basis, you know. So we see um, not only lending uh, to the, what they call the unbankable or the poor, but it's lending products, it's savings products, it's uh, payment products and all those things will converge to create viability. So you talk about the bottom of the pyramid, I think the pyramid's bottom is being extended and you have to get into that space. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Mr. Rabesh Sopti of Indusin Bank. In 2019, I have been felt in a very uncomfort uh, to, to my uh, journey and I feel that you know uh, there is a uh, microfinance criticism have been started on that too. Uh, we are all, all are bad people. I really wanted to prepare myself for this beautiful business that my father has started. Lupin is, uh, is a very uh, you know, it's a big meritocracy and you have to earn your spurs before you will be respected and uh, before you can succeed in the company. We have done for others but not done enough for our own country and that remains a problem and an issue. And uh, I hope I'll live long enough to solve that problem also and help in solving it.